Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? This is Jeff, and I am returning with a new follow-up to my uh, VSG surgery. Um, uh, just to take you back, you know, from the last couple of videos, um, this is my six-week post-op uh, follow-up, which I had Monday, this, this past Monday. Um, just to go back in, in time to, you know, as a refresher, um, I was originally slated to have my uh, VSG surgery in April. Uh, it was canceled due to uh, the the impact of COVID-19. And uh, I received a call from the nurse in May as they were, you know, beginning to open up the hospitals again for elective surgeries. And so they had scheduled it for, uh, they had scheduled it for June, Um and the time frame of which she called me to when they were scheduled, it, I felt was too soon because I had actually stopped doing the things that I was doing in preparation for a surgery. So I had gone back to eating unhealthy and, and drinking a lot of sugary drinks like Monster, Red Bulls, uh, Slurpees, uh, Pepsi, juice, a lot of those things and just eating, th eating foods that was high in fats and grease, uh, frying and things like that. So my weight had gained, had, um, had ballooned since. I was preparing myself for surgery. Uh, at my highest weight, I was 336 pounds. And so when I went in June the 5th uh, of this year for my pre-op clinic appointment, uh, they did blood work. And uh, I went home and I was just getting ready to go get my hair cut when I returned. When I, when I received a call from the nurse that she was highly concerned that my blood sugar was extremely high and she wanted me to return to the hospital immediately. Um, I didn't feel any way. I didn't feel, you know, I didn't feel like my blood sugar was high. I didn't feel um, any ways at all. And when I went, they did a quick blood draw and determined that my blood sugar was indeed higher at that time. And what they did was they... Um, canceled my uh surgery they refused to operate which i, I thought was great because uh, the pre-op uh clinic appointment they were going to do um they were going to do it via zoom or via the web uh i'm not sure who did this but somebody set it up for me to come in in person and for me that was nobody but god because had i come in had i done this via web and uh come in for the surgery, there would have been a, a lot of complications. So I'm glad it actually came in. Uh, my primary care physician was leaving the network, so I had to find a new one quickly because that would be the only way I can get to a position where I could take um, have this surgery. So I found a new uh, primary care physician uh, within a matter of a couple of days, and I met with him immediately. And... Um, uh, it was determined that my A1C, well, first of all, the A1C is, is what determines uh, type 2 diabetes or not. And for years, I fell between a 5.7. And my primary care physician, going back to 2016, warned me that if I continued on the path I was on, that uh, type, two di type 2 diabetes would be imminent. Um. And so I went back and forth, you know, trying to change my eating habits, trying to exercise, trying to work out. I was working hard and things like that. And I was able to drop my weight down um, without the assistance of the surgery. Um, the problem is it, I, I, had a, I had trouble maintaining that weight. And so when you're somebody who eats out of boredom, out of depression, you know, food becomes an ally. And you use those things to uh, mask what's really going on. You tend to be a denial that you have a problem, a food not only a food problem but a health problem. Because once your weight starts to balloon, all these issues follow. So I was on the uh, edge of diabetes for quite some time. I was borderline, and uh, June the fifth, my A one C shot up to fifteen fifteen percent. And so I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and I was immediately placed on metformin and insulin. And when you are diagnosed with diabetes, other things, um, you have other issues going on as well, like high blood pressure, high cholesterol. So I was placed on those medications <clears throat> as well. 
And some of the side effects of some of those things is kidney issues. And luckily, my kidneys were fine as they did a, a metabolic panel. And my kidneys turned out to be fine. Um, I had praised myself on not having to take high blood pressure pills as that has run in my family with both my parents having high blood pressure. And, you know, in the Af African-American community, um, we um, tend to have a higher risk for uh, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, things like that. And it's, a lot of it has to do with the things that we eat as opposed to other races and, um, you know, things of that nature. We tend to eat things that are high in fat and, um, you know, a lot of fried foods and um, uh, salt intake and, and, and things like that, high sugar and stuff like that. And so um, I was upset that I had to take all this medication because I felt like I would never, that would never happen to me, however it did. And so I made some changes immediately. I cut my sugar intake down significantly. I started using um, Truvia and uh, other uh, sweeteners when I drink coffee. Um, I lowered my salt intake. I, was, I watched my sodium intake. And I drink Crystal Light, which I drink now. Stop drinking pop, soda, uh, uh, juice, Red Bull, Monster. Stop drinking all those things. And uh, I started incorporating more vegetables. And so the surgery was back on uh, for September the 1st. Uh, when I went in for my surgery, September the 1st, from June 5th to September the 1st, which was a Tuesday, my weight had dropped to... Uh, 319 pounds. So that was my surgery weight on that Tuesday. Uh, that Saturday when I was at home, I checked my blood pressure and the blood pressure cup re read 181 over 160. I didn't feel sick or anything like that, but because I had just had surgery, I felt like it was necessary for me to go to the ER, which I probably shouldn't have done. I probably should have just gone to a Walgreens, which is partnering with the company that I work for. And I could have got a ac more accurate blood pressure screening but I went to the ER nonetheless and so my blood pressure was nowhere near that high and so you know they check your weight while you're there my weight had fallen to 314 pounds so I had lost five pounds between that Tuesday and that Saturday um, <clears throat> when I went in for my uh, two-week uh, post-op appointment they had, my weight had checked in at 295 pounds and I was surprised that I was finally, finally under 300 pounds. And I had, I have not been under 300 pounds in years. I would say something like maybe three or four years. I was, I had, sli I had got slightly under 300 pounds, maybe three or four years ago. And, um, two weeks after that, I went to get released to go back to work. And I checked my weight at that time, and I was 287 pounds. Um, this past Monday was my six-week post-op appointment, and my weight checked in at 272 pounds, and I'm now uh, at 270 pounds. So I've lost uh, possibly 50 pounds since the surgery altogether, 60-some-odd uh, pounds. And I say that to say this. At one point in time, uh, after the surgery, I greatly regretted having surgery. I wish I hadn't done that. I was mad at myself. I was angry. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I really didn't want nobody around. And so the first two or three weeks, I was in somewhat of a state of depression because I felt that I could have done this on my own. And more of the reason I felt that I could have done this on my own was because I recognized my relationship with food. Food was a great ally of mine, but it was also a great enemy of mine because while it helped me mask a lot of things that was going on. It also caused me to, uh, it caused me great pain on the outside uh, because I was in denial of my weight gain. I was in denial of the health issues that was caused by my weight gain. And so when you are somebody who is fairly young or, or not that old and you have trouble walking long distances where you're out of breath and you have to sit down, or you're trying to walk up and down the stairs and you're out of breath, or you just don't feel like walking, or you just have to sit down because your back hurts really bad, or your legs hurt, or your feet hurt from all the walking, and you don't feel like exercising and it's hard to exercise, that is a problem. 
that you should never deny because that is a serious uh, health issue on the rise. And so I think I was diabetic for a long time before I even realized it because I would have times with my personal trainer where my body would feel like it was locking up because it, it was cramping so bad when I would go to the gym and try to do exercises that he would try to stretch my muscles and it wasn't working. And what I realized was the work that we put in, the work that I put in with him did not work because I had not changed the way that I ate. And so, you know, I say this to everybody, um, exercising means nothing unless you're willing to change your eating habits because you have to eat foods that fuel you to be able to um, do the type of exercises that, or, or yeah, do the type of exercises, strength training that will produce results. And um, if you're eating, you know, uh, high foods, high foods and high uh, cholesterol, high um, uh, fried fried foods, salts, high sodium content, and stuff like that. It, it's not working out. Is not going to help you get to the where get to where you want to be. It is not. You need to focus more on few foods that fuel you. And you know, I didn't want to eat stuff like that. I wanted to eat things that taste good to me. And 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 after the surgery, I didn't realize how much I took food for granted. You know. Eating what I want, when I want, how much I want it. I didn't realize how much I took food for granted. And so now, uh, since the surgery, what I'm doing is I'm I'm training myself how to eat uh, in, in portion control sizes. And I'm training myself how to eat the right things now. And it's not to say that you can't eat stuff that you used to, used to eat. You can still do that at some point after surgery. Not immediately, but at some point after you start to heal and time goes on. But there's caution uh, with that. You have to do it in moderation because some people who have t had this surgery, they have lost a significant amount of weight, has gained uh, a significant amount of weight, and um, some have gained more than what they had before. And I don't have any intentions on that happening to me. I don't have any intentions on that happening to me. So now I'm training myself just to do the right things and eat the right way. Um, but... You know, having lost all this weight, and I think with each 10 pounds that I've lost, um, I feel totally different. I feel different in a good way. I'm starting to feel more confident. I'm starting to look at clothes again, the types of clothes that I like, the type of clothes, the way that I used to dress when I was smaller. And I'm preparing myself to start dressing like that again. Uh, you know, my movement has changed, being able to move around, wanting to do things. Because when I was at my heaviest, I didn't want to do anything but stay at home. And it was not so much out of embarrassment for the way that I looked because I got to the place where I could care less. Um, but it was because I just didn't feel comfortable going out. I didn't feel like going out. I was always tired. Didn't feel like doing anything. Didn't feel like going anywhere. Now I don't mind going out. I don't mind going places, you know, meeting new people, things like that. So um, even though I regretted my decision two weeks after the surgery, now I would not have changed my mind. I would not have changed my decision. I would have done it. I was I would if I had it to do over again, I would do it. If you are somebody that is considering the surgery or you are in the process of having a surgery, you just need, you know, some guidance on where this may take you. And, you you know, look at these videos and you see people that's, that has done it and um, their stories and their journey. And there's people on here that's done it years ago that has maintained the weight. You know, reach out to them and ask questions like, what did you do? What types of things did you do? And and everybody's situation is different. Know that. Because the, from the videos I watched, some people's uh, stages post-op when it comes to food were different. You know, my stages were the first two weeks was liquid diet, which consisted of broth and uh, sugar-free jello and, and things of that nature, you know, waters. And and then the next two weeks, it was it was still liquids, but I could do cream of soup. So you're basically adding, uh, as you go along, I, I can do like cream of soup, but it had to be strained. And so the fifth week, um, was pureed foods. So it was like, you know, let's say tuna in the, in the pack and, and things like that. And then uh, after that, it was soft foods. And when I got the soft foods, I felt a little better because now I see I can actually feel like I'm eating real stuff again. And now I'm on the, on the solid food. So I'm back to eating real food, um, but you still have to take it easy, you know? So it, 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 you know, people say, 
when you bring this to, to their to their um attention that you want to have the surgery some people say ignorant things like you don't need that you just need to you know stop eating so much and work out it, it's not about not eating and work out it's not about stop eating and, and, and working out and then some people say are uh, you trying to take the easy road and I'll, I'll say this if you've never had this surgery you have no room to comment on it because this is not the easy road having this surgery is not the easy road at all it's still hard and it's still you still have to put in hard work you still have to you know with this surgery you have to really be on your p's and q's and you have to make sure you're following your diet and your your plans to the t like you're taking your calcium you're taking your your vitamin every single day you're exercising you're moving around you're doing those things you're eating right you have to do this because it, it having a surgery is not the magic tool for life it does not guarantee weight loss for life you have to put in that work what the surgery did for me was put me in a place where it made life a little bit easier to do the things that i was trying to do before the surgery like trying to work out and trying to balance that with eating the right foods that fuel me to do my workouts and and you know things that get me in shape and 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 help me breathe a little better help me rest better help me move around better my mobility has gotten greater so i didn't do this surgery so that it could be an easy way out i did this surgery because sometimes in life we all need help you know just just like this this uh, a stimulus package that we had not too long ago where the government uh, deposited $1,200 into people's bank accounts and sent them $1,200. You know, you can say that's easy, but no, sometimes people need help to to boost them, to keep them afloat so that they can move forward and try to do the things they need to do. And that's what this surgery did. It boosted me. It gave me the support to do the things that I I was trying to do before that I had trouble doing like trying to exercise, like trying to balance that with eating properly. So since I've been doing those things post-surgery, I, I appreciate it a lot more. So it's not the easy route. You still have to put in the hard work. It's still hard work. And, and you really have to address your, um, relationship, your relationship with food, which is what I'm doing now. I'm truly addressing my relationship with food and making sure that I do not put myself in a position where I uh, return to you know, laying in my bed, watching TV, eating huge uh, portion meals. Because had I kept going and not had this surgery, I probably would have had a stroke. I probably would have a stroke in the next few years or a heart attack. And so I don't want those things to happen. I I, I don't want to be on medications. Medications are very expensive. Um, and, you know, I have great insurance, so it's easier for me to afford my medications. But not everybody has that. And so medications are very expensive and I don't want to be that kind of person that has to pay hundreds of dollars for stuff that I can't afford just to be able to live. So now I'm trying to do the things that I need to do now in order to uh, make things a little easier as I get older and um, maintain a healthy, uh, healthy atmosphere. So this has been, this is the conclusion of my six week post-op. My next post-op is uh, in in six weeks, they want to do a three month post op, and and by three months, you know, right now I'm only eating two ounces uh, per meal and three meals a day. So, in in, in the, by my next post op, I will increase to four ounces per meal, which is cool because I'm actually getting used to. I'm really getting used to eating two ounces per meal now, so I'm okay with that. And I think that. By the time I do four ounces per meal, I probably won't even eat all four ounces. And it, it sounds crazy to people that have never had this surgery because you're used to eating more uh, per meal. And you're used to having snacks here and there. And so if you have this surgery, you know, your stomach is a lot smaller and it really can't take a lot of food anyway. So, you know, you get full pretty quickly. And so I don't I don't think that I'll be able to um, handle four ounces, you know, but then again, I never know. Uh, I'm just looking forward to, you know, I want to, I want to drop right now. I'm looking forward to dropping the next 40 pounds. So that my ideal weight, uh, not my ideal weight, but you know, I could be down in the 230s. I would love to get down to 200, even though my ideal weight is 175. I don't want to be that small to me. That's way too small for me. Um, but I would love to be at about 200 pounds. So that's my goal. That's what I'm working towards. And I will get to that goal. 
and I want to be someone who is actively working out, you know, at least five times, five days a week and just moving around on the weekend. So that is my goal. So again, this has been it for my six week post op. Um, I might post uh, in the next two weeks. So I might wait for my three three month post op because I'm trying to do this in real time for people who it, who are considering the surgery or going through the process of having a surgery. I want to try to do this in real time, uh, just so you can see my results as time goes by. So please stay tuned for my next my next video. And if you have any questions, um, you're undecided, you don't know which way to go. I'm not a medical profession professional by far, but just I can just give you my experience that's all i can tell you and i can tell you do your research and, and and look at other videos of people that has done this and and videos of people that you know are years into this process and just kind of take you know what you need here and there to make your decision but i can answer you know questions based off my experience if you need so so everybody have a good day and i'll see you later goodbye